Hey guys, it's me, SD Vaughn here with another video. And for today's video, we're going to be doing another Dr. Stone discussion video. Um, I really do like discussing this manga. I always keep coming back to discussing Dr. Stone. Um, I always keep wanting to talk about Dr. Stone. Um, especially out of all the manga I've been reading, you know, uh, Dragon Ball Super, My Hero Academia, Shaman King, Fire Force. Just been reading a number of mangas and stories, but Dr. Stone is the one I've been the most invested in out of all of them. I mean, it would go, I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen would come right after. It's just because of the premise of their stories that really intrigue me. Um, so I've always been coming back to, uh, coming back to Dr. Stone and I wanted to discuss the overall main antagonist of the Dr. Stone series and that is the mysterious Y Man. Uh, I mean, th this has been a long time coming. I mean, there's so much we still don't know about Y Man, and we're probably gonna get some answers here soon in a couple chapters, um, especially with what's currently going on in the recent um, chapters. If you're reading it on the Viz um, website or on the app, um, and before I go any further, I just want to stress this: you know, there will be spoilers. And sorry, I never really said things like that in in, in any of my previous videos, but. There, there will be spoilers um, for everything I'm going, I'm going to be discussing here with Y Man, and so yeah, this this was a long time coming discussing Y Man, and it and it, 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 it got me thinking to a, a lot about Y Man's actions, not not why he's petrifying people, just a lot of his actions throughout the story after the fact. Besides the initial, for you know petrification, the first. The first pet petrification that occurred in the story, at the beginning of the story, back in 2019, um, for, for the characters there, Senku and, and the Kingdom of Science crew only encounter um, this, you know, the Y Man, this, this, um, I don't, this enigmatic, mysterious being. They've only encountered him like three times in the story, and. You know, and, and that's when when I was researching, going through all the man the throughout the chapters with throughout my manga, and you know, just you know, doing my research, noting each chapter that Y Man was present and what actions he was doing, or at least what he was doing in the story. You know, and what the characters were discussing when um when Y Man you know would appear, or at least when they heard Y Man, because they don't physic we don't physically see Y Man, so we don't know what Y Man looks like. But we're hearing Y Man um, throughout these points in the story, so it, it got me thinking: Why isn't Y Man sending just another wave of Medusas down to Earth just to petrify everyone again? I mean, he could have done it. Um, like when he became aware of Senku and crew, um, the second he became aware of them, he could have just instantly petrified them, and story would have been over. Um, or he could have like there were so many points in the story after Y Man became aware of them that that he could have petrified Sinku, the Kingdom of Science, and any other humans that were unpetrified at the time. You know, Ishigami Village, Zeno and his crew, um, everyone on Treasure Island, um, and then especially after the point, uh, I mean, he, d I mean, and he does actually petrify everyone eventually. He does get end up getting to petrify everyone, the whole world again, um, thanks to Joel having his, you know, and I keep mentioning so many times in videos, Joel having his arm, you know, slammed down on in a trunk by Brody uh, with his watch that was broadcasted a signal of Y Man that I, uh, you know, to petrify everyone again, causing the second world petrification. And then after that, he's not really, he's not, you know, doing much. After that, we don't really hear much from Y Man or much of what he's doing. We're, we're more or less focusing on Sinku and crew and their and their efforts to um, rebuild society and civilization, and also get to go confront Y Man himself. Uh, but you know, even from I guess I guess you could say in a flashback. See, that's what I'm talking about, uh, and, and this proves my point of why isn't he? You know petrifying everyone through certain points in the story because from Matsukaze's story when they revived him after the Treasure Island arc you know he describes um, the raining down of a number of Medusas um, you know which you know also explains why Treasure Island had a working Medusa to use during the events of that arc 
you know, you know, later on during the story uh, in the most recent arcs, they discuss the the possibility of why man sending down more Medusas in waves to petrify everyone again. So I'm like, why isn't he doing this? This got me thinking. Like as I was writing this, I was like, wait, we only we only encounter Wyatt Man like three times in the story, and this is and and and, it, and he's not really doing much of you know of anything. So what is this man doing? What is his grand plan? I, I it, he seems smart j- just based on. You know, the fact that he's able to make a synthetic voice of Sinku's um, after the events of the Treasure Island arc. Um, he's able to hitchhike on their signal whenever they were broadcasting it, interrupting Sinku from Ishigami Village. So I'm like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing? I, I, I just like, you know, what, what kind of antagonist are you? Like, I, I, what's your... Like, cause there, so many times th- these guys are going to stop you and ruin whatever grand scheme you have here by petrifying the whole entire world. So I'm like, you, you should have stopped people way before then, or somewhere down the line, um, did something, why, man? Um, but I'm sure Boichi and Inagaki have a, like plans, and well, you know, you know, it's, when we get to the moon and Senku and. Stanley and Kohaku confront Y-Man and we'll get to see what he's kind of about and everything. So, but other than that, I'm just like, ah, oh, this dude, this dude really wants to petrify all of humanity. Notice these guys are awake and hasn't done anything. Um, and, and that's where one of my questions now begins is what stopped him from doing this before they, you know, what's to stop Y-Man from petrifying everyone before they could have made a way to counter him? Like I say, like I said before, Y Man has only appeared. Uh, well, he was heard. You know, he. You know, like I said, he doesn't have a physical. He doesn't have a physical body. I mean, he does have. We we can assume he has a physical body. We just haven't seen it. He's only been here throughout three times in the story. Um, it's important that we discuss this because bef- because before chapter ninety five, it seems that Y Man wasn't even aware that Sinku and the rest of the Kingdom of Science crew. Have been revived, which is also kind of weird to think about because during Matsukaze's story, which is before Senku and all of them get revived, he's raining down all those Medusas to petrify them, which is has to be hundreds and hundreds of years after the first petrification and well after Byakuya and the other five astronauts and possibly some you know some generations of their descendants. I've well passed on. It's like he either is aware of what's going on on Earth or he's not aware of what's going on on Earth or he needs a signal of some kind to be aware of what's going on on Earth. I'm not entirely sure there, but let's get back to these these uh, these points of when uh, Byakuya, would, uh, I mean, not Byakuya, of when Y Man appeared here in the story. Um, so basically, uh, Y Man. Uh, his first encounter, their, you know, Sinku and them's first encounter with Y Man, is first occurring from chapters, you know, it, well, it occurs around chapter 95, but it takes up to 90 to 95 uh, for this to occur. Uh, this is just because Sinku and crew are using a hot air balloon and, la- uh, and later a camera so that Sinku can lo- locate this body of oil so that they could. Um, fuel up their little mini speedboat um, and while on their speedboat they go out to test their signal a distance away from Ishigami village um, and this is where in chapters 95 of volume 11 of the manga when 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 they're on the water and they're testing their signal and they activate their signal tower um, that's being emitted with the radio waves immediately and I'm not even kidding about this. Like, they're first talking with Ruri for a little bit. And then immediately, Y-Man becomes aware of their presence. He instantly is able to pick up on their signal. That also makes me question, why do you have a radio signal? Who would you be contacting once you petrify the entire world? Um, but, yeah, so this is the first time that, that single and crew will become aware of Y-Man's existence and Y-Man of theirs, vice versa. Um, and this would be the start of where we learn of the overall antagonist, 
well, at least we call him the overall antagonist because of his actions against the crew and how the crew take it, um, Wyman's actions to them. Um, and this is where things get really interesting. All right. All right. Okay. So what I liked and what was so interesting about this when I was reading this volume, especially when I was rereading it again for this video, is that Sinku, like, like I said before, Sinku and crew were only talking to worry for about a little bit before their signal gets interrupted and then Y man just comes on the line and you know, and, and then all, you know, all they can hear on their signal is just the, you know, the voice of someone saying why. And, and what I like, um, like here too, uh, is the depiction that Boichi has in the panel, which is, I thought was really awesome. It's like, it's like death itself. You know, like how, when they went to go to the sort Sorific acid and it was showing the depiction of death itself in like this giant lake um, or you know water that's been radiated and all that stuff um, It's kind of doing that here with him with why man. He's saying why and it's kind of like this uh, Deathless person that you see depicted behind the why and it's just like it's just like why And you know, it's also the reason you know why he has his name um, why they call him Y Man is because that's uh, you know that's what he was saying the first time they encounter him, um, and you know it, it, this is where they you know this the crew immediately are, are deduced that this guy like because so far you know beyond this point they haven't encountered anyone else that's able to produce like a signal like theirs, um, so they have so they're believing right now that this person and they're correct that this person is the reason behind all the per petrification. Um, this is their, you know, their, their, you know, someone that's against them, their enemy, so to speak. And what I thought was their long-term goal was to revive humanity. Their long-term, their, <laughs> their long-term goal is now why man um, from here on after discussing why man I'm about to make things kind of short and simple after this. Um, cause the rest of the appearances of why man are kind of brief and, they're not really there's not really too much to talk about them um except for my own in, in inference about them um you know he's hurt again after the treasure island arc after he is defeated after you know Senku turns he borrowed a stone um y man is hurt again once again between chapters 137 and 138 of volume 16 um he's once again he's once again interrupting the signal um, between Sinku and Ishigami Village, like it, it, I kind of like this. Like Sinku is once again talking to Ruri, um, R I don't even know how to pronounce it. Kaku's sister, uh, once again from Ishigami Village, and um, it's that right after the battle between um, Ibarra and uh, it, 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 what I thought was kind of cool with this is that um, Ruri is like you know telling Sinku that he's been sending them some odd messages. Um, and this is because they've been getting the transmission from Y Man himself um, through his broadcast, now specifying to petrify the entire world again. And it seems like he was doing this through intervals. And this is what I thought was pretty cool. And I'm going to be mentioning here again later. This dude is doing it through intervals. And this will become um, uh, important later uh, when I talk about his next encounter. And what I think. Is something interesting to be thinking about. He's using a synthesized voice of Sinku's that he's using through intervals. And this is something to think about. All the way up until 193 uh, uh, of the manga, chapter 193. Um, that was during the South America arc, the, Zeno, the conflict between Zeno's crew and, Sin and Sinku's crew. Um, and this is what I think has been happening since then, um, is that Y Man has been playing this broadcast of petrifying the entire Earth since the end of the Treasure Island arc. I know I uh, he's been playing that in hopes that his voice will get close enough to the Medusa that he can then just petrify everyone again. I mean, he's like, come on. The second they, they, that's how Sinku knew his, you know, like, he banked on the fact that Y Man was playing this on loop to get close to Medusa to 
activate it and petrify the world again because that's how they petri- did the second worldwide petrification. Is as Joel was broadcasting Y Man's in uh, um, message through his watch that was broadcasting the signal. So Y Man petrified the world again the second time. So he so he was playing it during this entire time. I mean, I mean, come on. We we got to think. We got we got to really think about this, guys. We got we got to really think about this when it comes to Y Man. He's when we we later find out. I think I believe after the treasure. Yeah, it was after the Treasure Island arc that we find out that Y Man's been broadcasting from the moon. Sinku points this out. Um, I, he could have done so much more. This dude has been on the moon for like ages. Like he could have set uh, precautions for someone break broke out of the stone or or anything else. I mean, he could have thrown out more Medusas to petrify the earth like he did during Matsukaze's story, um, flashback slash story. Um, and you know, uh, or you know, cause cause Siku, you you know, like Siku and crew, um, around like. 198, uh, <laughs> chapter 198 going forward, we're in a rush to try to hurry up to create this rocket and revive as much of humanity as they can because they thought that, that, um, that Y Man might act here soon to prevent them from, you know, heading to the moon to stop him. Y Man remained, you know, he didn't do anything for, for, for most of that. 20 plus chapters after everyone got revived in, in chapter 198 like he didn't do anything and you know and just like i mentioned sure um around like chapters 213 and 214 the, the medusa stuff activated it could have been y man but i'm starting to think it couldn't have been y man it might have been someone um on the inside I, I just i just don't i just don't think it's y man um and then if it was why wait seven years later to try to pull a stunt like that? Um, they, they've already... Siku and crew were spending years reviving a bunch of humanity now to the point like when they were... When, um, oh, crap. I'm trying to remember what's the name. Um, it was Rusui. Ha! Ah, I remember his name. Uh, Rusui, the, the, one, uh, um, the one that I was talking to Zeno. Um, when he's talking to, Z- when Cinco and them were talking to Zeno about reviving Stanley, um, and, you know, Zeno wants to play the bad guy and they're telling Stanley, basically, you know, you don't have to be the bad guy anymore and you could shoot down your, your, you know, your goal of wanting to take over the world because, you know, humanity's basically revived now. So civilization is alive now. You know, we got it up and running. And they and they have to deal with Y Man. They don't have a choice. It's a risky move, especially since they're going into space with this craft they're making. Anything that happens to this craft, they're kind of done for. Because currently, right now in the in the in the in the story, you know, Senku, Kuhaku, and Stanley, the chosen pilots for the rocket, are on their way to go face him. Like they're on their way right now, and it's kind of a risky move too. They even mention this a lot, like you know, if they get petrified, you know. Well, the Medusa worked the way they needed to after, you know, it self-activated um, earlier in a uh, couple of chapters ago. Um, what if, you know, Y-Man throws down a rain of Medusas? Um, but they were talking about, you know, ways they can counter this to the best of their ability. Um, you know, what they could do. Um, they, they, they describe with the Medusa as kind of like, you know, really super future tech. It's like super advanced. Tech. Possibly he's been petrifying himself periodically as well because he started the petrification back in um, 2019. Sinku woke up in the year fi- um, 5738 um, and then they made the petrification, the, the revival fluid in 5739 and of course, you know, everything that goes down and of course, everything else. So why man has to be periodically uh, you know, uh, petrifying himself and then reviving himself likely at certain points to check on the earth to make sure everyone's still petrified and turned to stone. For why? And, and I think that's that's why I love Dr. Stone with this overall mystery. 
because it's something that's making me still trying to guess and think about everything that's going on. Um, you know, like who's Y man and would he have a connection to Sinku? And then, and then of course, you know, why petrify everyone? Why not the animals? Why only birds? Why are you on the moon? Um, why weren't you aware of uh, Bianca and the other five astronauts that were still in space when the petr petrification happened? Like, he allowed Ishigami Village to kind of be created. He's indirectly the reason Kwaku, Chrome, and, and the rest of the village villagers of Ishigami Village exist. Um, he is the instigator. He is the cause of the events. He is um, the reason why this story um, happens the, uh, in the first place, obviously. Um, I like that he's a different kind of villain. Like, he's not direct in action with anything he's doing it's all it's all the medusa he's he's attacking with the medusa itself and um he we don't really get to see him we don't get to see what he looks like um always see we just hear um why man through the broadcast through the radio signal um you know with him his first appearance saying why uh the second appearance using a synthetic voice of Senku showing you know that this guy's smart that he has technology. This guy knows his stuff. And what do you think he's plotting? You know, and what do you think he, why do you think he wanted to petrify the entire world? I know that's a, a question that's probably been, you know, asked by everyone since the manga and the anime, you know, began and, you know, and all that stuff. Um, what do you think he's plotting? Do you think he'll, he'll, you know, he's just letting them, you know, get to him on the moon just to, you know, confront them this has just has been his whole big brain plan because for someone as smart he could have he could have so many times he's, he's he could have he could have started the kingdom of science crew so many times they were able to create this rocket and and, and yo does mention it has been years like even Sinku mentions that uh to Zeno after they got revived it's been like three years and that's not counting the years it took for them globe trotting the earth after they got revived reviving humanity this is when they were working on the rocket and Sinku tells to Zeno it's been about three years since they've been working on all this. So a lot of time has gone past. You just don't see it with the characters because they don't show that they've aged for whatever reason. But um, <laughs> I, I just still just don't think he's, he's, he's going to let it be done undone so easily. He like, 3,000 years of keeping them in stone and then trying to petrify them again. He, you know, raining down Medusas during Matsukaze's um, era. I, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think he's, I think he still has another trick up his sleeve. And, I, and I, I'm kind of wanting to see what happens. Do you guys think he may have a trick up his sleeve? Do you guys think that um, maybe um, he's just not noticing the fact that everyone got revived the after the second worldwide petrification? He's just unaware of things going on, even though the crew were stated that he could petrify them at any time and they got to, you know, get to, you know, working really fast on this rocket so they can confront him on the moon. So uh, <laughs> it's a lot. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know what you guys, uh, your thoughts and I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. Uh, sorry this went on long. I just really like talking about Dr. Stone. I really like talking about Why Man. And I got another Dr. Stone video coming too. I mean, I, I, I got to talk about Dr. Stone. Um, I like to enjoy talking about this, um, about Why Man here. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Hope you guys enjoyed this discussion once again. Um, just thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying whatever anime or, or that you're watching, any manga that you're reading, um, any cartoon you're watching. Um, any movie that you're watching, um, any comic book that you're reading. Um, just hope you guys are enjoying whatever. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs>